We got fast cars, fast women, and fast food. We got Live Aid, Real Aids, and Lemonade. We got Scarface, Car Chase, and the Red Race. We got George Bush, Big Bush, and some good kush. Ladies and pimps, mullets are in season. Hawaiian shirts are flying off the shelves. Africa by Toto is blasting. And actual Africa is fasting. It's the 1980s, pimp. What a time to be alive, am I right? Except I wasn't even an itch in Papa Zoid's ball bag at the time. And I wouldn't fall out until many years later because I wouldn't dare to be born until I knew I would come into a world that had GTA Vice City in it. Vice City, aka VC, is like a love letter to the greatest decade in human history. And in conclusion, you could go fuck yourself if you think otherwise. Vice City gave me a brain hemorrhage with its outdated jank-ass PS2 controls, but then resurrected me using an anthem called 99 Luff Balloons on Wave 103. God damn, this beat is gnarly, homeboy. But back to the jams later. This game has so much swagger to it, so much soul, that even though this was made in nine months' time, and even though the gameplay makes me want to punch through a brick wall, and the graphics made by retinas bleed, I can say firmly that this game is still better than 99% of the bullshit that releases today. And GTA Vice City had perfected all the fun that a video game should be. A game where you could just grab the remote, boot it up, and immediately feel the world wither away around you as an eight-year-old you commits heinous acts of violence. Anyways, let's kick this off with a little disclaimer. This game is from 2002. It's got a face like a Polish woman. It's a real Two bagger, if you know what I mean. <sighs> The graphics look like hammer dog shit to anyone that's played a video game from the last decade is what I'm trying to say, and I, I just need you to be ready for that going in. But now, it doesn't matter for me, because I know what this thing can do. It's got enough soul to feed a family of 500, but to demonstrate to the other Zoomers how old this game is, three of the largest new additions that made the fans rock hard was an in-game map, jumping out of cars while moving, and flyable planes. That's where we're at. And this leads me to my first point. Let me just rip the band-aid off real quick. This game plays is like walking on serrated Legos sometimes because of how unpolished it is. For example, oh, I don't know, I guess it has the fucking Ninja Gaiden right stick first person turning controls and I think I'm gonna pop a brain pipe. You know, I'm a man, I'm a big strong boy, but I've been avoiding a Ninja Gaiden video purely because those psychopaths decided to map turning to first person controls. Then I load up Vice City, try to turn, and I immediately start getting flashbacks. I have to do goddamn strafing runs just to get my camera looking in the right direction of the end and then when they tie one of the goddamn special autistic intelligence bots to my waist like Lance Vance and this jackass is shooting me in the back while I'm trying to map out our escape, th then, I, then I get behind him instead. And what does he do now? He runs into my bullets. Then, okay, fine. Okay, fine. I can't shoot when I, in the presence of an autistic intelligence. Then great. Let's make a break for it. But now what does he do? He stops running because he can't keep up. I know I'm a quirked up white boy, but how am I faster than him? He's... Got nice shoes. You know what? Most people cried. They whimpered. They were torn up and felt betrayed when Lance Vance betrayed them at the end of the game. And don't say spoilers. I will wring out your neck like a towel. This game is old enough to drink. But I can firmly say that when the end of the game came for me, I was so happy to finally put him into the dirt because I spent two hours doing that single mission with that prick. And, and you know what the final solution was ultimately? You want to know what it was? Too bad, I'm telling you anyways. Raising the wanted level to max so that I could steal a tank and shove his geriatric ass in the back. Furthermore, I know many people have problems with the RC mission, but I demolished the RC mission in one try. I'm nutty on the sticks. You know what caused me strife? It's not the enemies, it's not the tanks, it's not Lance Vance, it's not the camera, and it's not the fact that you can't crouch walk. It's the goddamn water. Let me, uh, let me just, let me just lay this out for you. Uh, they made this map Miami, then decided to make taking a dip in the water insta-kill. You just sink helplessly like a drunk who flopped over into the pool. Do you know how many times I flew off into that water? I can't swim in Vice City, and yet I can swim in San Andreas. I'm gonna have to stop myself right there. YouTube's not gonna allow that joke. Regardless, I'm sorry you had to see me like that. I know you look at me and you go, wow, that googly-eyed piece of shit is really put together. He looks mentally well. But, but I said all that because even in spite of its many sharp, rough edges that are drenched in my blood and tears, this is still GTA. 
GTA, and it is still more fun than any PlayStation exclusive in the last five years. Sorry, Sony fanboys. Go stroke Alloy's peach fuzz to calm down. Blemishes and all, GTA Vice City still has the undeniable fun factor of being on an assignment to kill someone and being able to ram their golf cart into the insta-kill water while I just dive in your arms, blasts over the radio, or racing down freeways, dodging the hordes of feds that have mistaken you for a canine, also while listening to I Just Died in Your Arms on the radio, or hopping out of the car and shooting your completely legitimately obtained and licensed minigun firearm, God bless, also while listening to I Just Died in Your Arms on Spotify. And my favorite part about this gameplay is that it isn't the new, realistic, cover and aimbot bore fist that is 4 and 5. Vice City doesn't have that problem, it's from the good old days of GTA where you just had to stand out in the open and figure it out like a man, or die, 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 then use the cheat to pick up the Vietnam era problem solver. Hell yeah, brother! Set cook time to two seconds! I love the smell of roast pig in the morning, God bless! It's just so enjoyable that, that, all right, I can't move on without also saying that these cop mechanics are also pretty bullshit. Now, I don't have any problem with the police being enthusiastic. I actually prefer it. My problem is that if you aren't in a car with an incredible launch such as the Lamborghini, the cops are gonna hang onto the door as you're pulling away and immediately bust you in about two seconds time. So many times I was just chilling or I didn't even see them coming, then BAM! Immediate bust. Not even a chance. And don't say, if you say skill issue or zoomer scum, in the comments, then that would remind me that I forgot to talk about the chainsaw. Chainsaw is such a nice weapon. Something about the way it cuts through to tractors, you know, scum. It's such an elegant little tool for chopping you down. <laughs> I mean trees. Chop chopping, chopping big five foot six trees down. But that's enough of that. Now let's run through the story. It features a Vietnam vet, big budget flicks, strip clubs, and a whole lot of Cuban sand. Fight like men with huge cojones! Do I really need to say anything else? I do? All right, well, rumor has it they just hired Gary Busey to come in and talk for a few hours, then they made a whole story around his character. Candy has massive personalities, and you play as a Hawaiian shirt-wearing homicidal maniac voiced by Ray Liotta. If that doesn't sell this game for you, pimp, then too bad. You couldn't even buy it anymore to begin with. Speaking of soul, though, the setting, albeit small, is another huge standout factor to this game. As a former Florida man, I gotta say... <laughs> I love the choice of 80s Miami. Boy, oh boy, do I was it a great choice. I'd say that my only complaint is that there weren't more giant mountains of lots of powder. Now, folks, the time has come. Let's talk about the jams and the talk shows. The humor and satire in this game's radio talk shows is on point. I could probably just lop on 10 minutes of uninterrupted footage to the end of this video. That would be much funnier than anything you've seen here today. Have a little With taste of this being magic. set such a bad example by big business, how are they supposed to respect each other? My solution? is easy. I'm gonna talk for a long time about a subject not in any way related and pretty soon people will forget all about it. I'll remind people that I have a great haircut and that under my stewardship, Vice City has had on average 15% better weather than before. While crime rates only go up if you don't turn the graph upside down. And for the part two of radio, these jams are top notch. Instead of the Kevin McLeod or royalty free generic bullshit most devs try to pass off as music in current day crime sandboxes called the Saints Row. <laughs> Vice City is on a complete opposite end of the spectrum with countless bangers like I Ran, Out of Touch, Africa, I Wanna Rock, and Got Another Thing Coming, Kids in America, and of course, I Just Died in Your Arms Tonight. And I know most people like your V-Rock or your Flash FM, but I'm a man of taste, of culture, culture that can only be accessed once per hour on Wave 103. Because you see, in 83, Nana released this, Nana, their most accomplished album. I think their undisputed masterpiece is 99 Luff Balloons. A song so catchy, most people probably don't listen to the lyrics, but they should. Because it's not just about Germans and red balloons, it's also a commentary about a nuclear apocalypse. <laughs> hey, Paul! <laughs> I give this game 10 rails out of 10. It's a shame Rockstar doesn't make games anymore. All right, buddy, I'm seeing stars. I gotta go.